Hi everyone, my name is Anna and welcome to Cactus Caffeine, where I share with you my hobby of growing desert plants over a cup of coffee. In this video, I will be embarking on something more challenging. I will be creating a mini desert garden in one section of my backyard. This is the section where I plan to work on my project and this area gets the most sun all throughout the day and in any season of the year. I want to create a low maintenance garden which means that it must have low water requirement and demands very minimal care. But on top of these, I want a small but attractive desert landscape that can be a focal point in my backyard. Here you will see my husband prepping the ground before we add more soil. As you can see, our soil is mainly composed of clay, sand, and lots of rocks. My plan is to create a raised bed to allow better water drainage. So we are here at the rock yard in my area. So this is where I am going to buy dirt. It will be way cheaper here than uh, buying the uh, bagged soil, the branded bagged soil. So in here, they actually sell it by the tons, but um, you can also do it by the gallon and just pay by the gallon. So we are here right inside the rock yard. As you can see, they have wall sections. They sell various rocks, different sizes. There is sand over there and that's where the topsoil is. So I am planning to get some topsoil, sand, and maybe uh, just a few of the small rocks just to make my own cactus soil. So I just have to find a shovel and the gallon buckets and it's cheaper here but then again i have to do my own shoveling it's okay this section that i am working on measures three feet by seven feet and a height of six inches all in all i used a total of about 48 gallons of topsoil sand rocks and cactus mix to make the raised bed In order for my garden to thrive, I have to choose the hardiest plants that can survive the extreme desert weather. Okay, I think this is looking good. Just have to straighten it. Okay, so I have one um, cactus in place now. This is my Trichoceris grandiflora. Um, as you can see, I left enough space around it so that when the babies grow, they still have room to grow because I know eventually these babies will form more pops or babies around it. So it's going to be like a big clump. That's why I left enough room around it for it to have um, room for growth. And I have sprinkler here installed. Well, this has been here when we bought the house, so I'm obviously not going to use this, so later on I'll just be hiding it under the rocks. So, that's the first cactus I had in the ground. So this is the next one that I will try to plant in the ground. This is a rainbow hedgehog.
okay guys so I took this um, rainbow hedgehog out of its pot so I bought this um, at a nursery store about two months ago I think or a month ago and um, I don't like the soil that it came with because I think it's too rich for a cactus so you can see it's it's very wet so I don't like the soil and then this um, part here feels kind of squishy I'm not sure if it's rotting but I do see roots here and the roots feel firm so even if I tug on them they don't fall off but this part and can you see this it feels squishy so I'm not sure what's going on with this is it rotting I'm not sure where these roots are coming from it looks like it's coming from here but this part is really squishy so it's forming a baby it's 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 one big clump so it's not two or three separate cactus it's a big clump so I would have to inspect this some more and see if I need to detach them so I finally got the second one planted in the ground um, I decided not to take it apart because when I looked underneath all of these were emerging from just one big stem um, of a cactus and um, I didn't want to risk uh, disturbing the roots and everything so I just decided to put them in the ground um, hoping for the best but just in case something happens I can always take like there are babies offshoots that one this one and then there's a little one growing here I can always take them and propagate them but for now we'll see what happens so after an hour and a half of working that's all I did for tonight it is getting late and so I'll have to continue this another day so I still have all the way to work on until this part here okay I'll see you the next day So this is what I have done so far. So I planted on the corner that's a Trichocereus grandiflora or grandiflorus. And then this is a claret cup cactus. I have a Santarita prickly pear or a two-back prickly pear. That's the one that turns purple when it's cold or very hot. And then I also included an agave right here. This is the Ferdinandi Regis Agave. Ow! Oops. <laughs> and then back there, well, it's not really at the back, it's more of in the center. This is a totem pole cactus. And this three ones here, they are called Apontia Aurea. So they have bright purple flowers and then so those are what i have done so far i still have this small space here i plan to plant this artichoke agave maybe in this section and then back there i still have this pots right here i'm trying to figure out how to arrange them back there so I have some more Apontias. I'll probably put one Apontia in here. And I'm thinking of putting some more at the back of this totem pole cactus. Because right now it's not that big yet. But I know when this is planted in the ground, it has the potential to form a very big trunk. Because I got this from my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law has hers for um, at least 10 years now and hers has a really big trunk. 
so in time this will cover a large portion here but it would take years so in the meantime i'm thinking just to fill up the space i might plant something at the back here and then later on when this totem pole cactus grows bigger and wider then i can just take out whatever i plant on the back so i will proceed with the project and do another update video